video is garnering tons of likes. And two, had it not been for some smaller channels talking about this, I would not have seen it to be able to cast my light on it. And actually, on that note, quick shout out to Reagan Wolf, as well as Mr. GG, both here on YouTube. As well as Mr. GG, both here on YouTube. What are the other reasons I'm personally I don't know what to do anymore. What do you do after this? What do you do after Philip DeFranco gives you a shout out? Like, do I make another video on the situation to get more views, or do I make a video thanking him? Like, I, I just don't know what to do. I honestly think I'm just gonna make the next Predator Chronicles episode, dude. It just kind of sucks, because I only have, like, three episodes left, dude. After those three episodes, rip me, dude. Everyone's gonna unsubscribe. No one's gonna watch my videos anymore. That's all I'm worth. Are you... Even listening to what I'm saying right now? Huh? What are you playing? I'm just playing our sponsors game. Wait, we have a sponsor- Hey everybody, I'm Laura Hughes. Proving girls can do it too. And by it, I mean touch your cousin. Was it worth it? No, it wasn't. You won't find me in your child's play set cause I gotta wear this ankle bracelet. I'm not here to go on a bender. I'm here because I'm a sex offender. Welcome to episode 22 of the Predator Chronicles. I am your host, Mr. GG. And today we are hitting the second half of the Riverside, California investigation. If you missed the first half, you can check it out right here. However, keep in mind that the first half is age restricted because some random person on the internet manually flagged the video because maybe they didn't like what was in it. Maybe they didn't like who was in it because it was themselves. We're not gonna talk about it, dude. We're not gonna talk about it. Good luck on your music career, bro. <laughs> now the second half of this investigation cucks us because they really only show us like five guys compared to the 13 guys in the first half even though they caught a whopping 51 men in the sting and after watching the episode a few times i realized it's because they purposely gathered the men they considered to be the most dangerous in this second half many of the men shown already being registered sex offenders as well as being convicted of other crimes anyways without further ado why don't you have a seat these are the predator chronicles and what were you going to do with the camera? Nothing. To start the second half, they go over some of the interviews in the booking station. So our first predator in line, kind of, is Mr. Rogers, the not safe for work version. This man had a secret life he hid from his family. Okay. But you've had sex with men before. It happens. It happens? Yeah. Does your wife know this? It's a, oh, wait, wait, wait. It happens. Caught in traffic? It happens. Drop your phone? It happens. Anal? A little bit of effort. This is a little bit. Maybe more. It happens. Maybe he's right. I mean, I'm assuming his eyesight isn't too great, considering he has like fucking welding goggles on. It happens. Yeah, how you like that, Stacy? My name's Stan. Not again. And what were you going to do with the camera? Nothing. Our next predator in line, kind of, is Hercules. Starring Lou Ferrigno. Guess what the detectives found on this man. What is this? Some pills? Okay. What kind of pills? Embarrassed to say so. Huh? Embarrassed to say so. Pull off a new one. Well, tell me what kind of pills we're talking about. Is those Viagra? Is that what you're embarrassed about in this situation? Not the whole soliciting a minor thing? Officer, my dick's like a poor noodle. You don't get it. I cry when I watch The Matrix because I would have took the blue pill. Do you know what my wife calls me? Crutches. Because I always walk with a limp. <laughs> Our next predator in line is trying to be normal. No, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> but when I confront him, he says it was curiosity that brought him here. Girl. Not sex. I don't know how old. I, that's why I'm here. I'm just curious. You're just curious. Yeah, I mean, right. I, I don't... I didn't bring any booze with me. What are these hand motions, my dude? I was just curious. I just wanted to know her age. You don't understand. I will come to you and we will get a place for passionate love. Yeah, well, what does that sound like to you? Like a creepy child predator. Am well, I too young? I hate to say this, but okay. you're not. Why do you hate to say that? Because yeah, it's say... like I'm some old pervert, but girls your uh, age yeah, okay. are so much but more let, fun. Let me, let, me, let me say this, okay. I, I have conversations like this with people that turn out to be guys most half more than half the time. It happens. You know? Dan is not good under pressure. Here's proof. But if somebody tells you they're a 13-year-old girl and you show up at the house to meet them, don't you see something inappropriate about that? Well, I mean, 
maybe so, but I, I had my big, I, my big doubts that she was 13. You visited people who you met online who said they were 13 before? Well, yeah, 13 or 15. So it's not the first time you've done this? Well, no, wait a minute. It, <laughs> Whoa, you almost got me there, Chris. You almost got me to admit that. You, you, you sneaky dog. I am Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on computer predators. Ah, well, you better, I'll shove that camera down his throat. I don't think you're going to want to do that. Well, then I'd like to say that pretty much I think you have it all wrong. But your point's well taken. Hi, guys. <laughs> pretty weird. Cut. <laughs> Such an odd guy. He's doing all this shit, threatens to shove a camera down the guy's esophagus. And he's like, oh, <laughs> cut. Nothing like dad jokes after being arrested for soliciting a minor. Am I right, boys? Am I right, boys? I'm with Dateline NBC. When nice to meet you with Dateline NBC, I'm Dan. <laughs> Listen, I know this guy resembles like a live action Fred Flintstone in a weird fan fiction where one was 13, but this guy scares the hell out of me. That very subtle aggression towards the cameraman, I can see how that can get out of hand. Not to mention he's been arrested for stalking, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know stalking was actually a crime. There goes my Friday night. No, but seriously, I didn't know it was actually like labeled stalking. I thought it was just thrown into like another category. Hey, do you know the difference between being stalked and being wooed, right? Wait a minute. I think I've read a good amount of chat logs at this point but apparently not. Because this is the first chat log I've seen that has screenshots of the guy's webcam, uncensored. Now, I'm obviously not gonna show you the screenshots, but uh, if you're curious for some morbid reason, the Perverted Justice crew titled the screenshots Chai underscore turtle penis dot JPG. Whatever you just imagined, is better than what it actually is. Look at this exchange in Dan's chat. Uh, some context, his webcam's on and he's doing webcam things. What are you doing? See, see, I knew you weren't watching. Oh, what did you do? I went to get a drink. I saw you before. That must be boring for you. No, what did you do? I'm sorry. Nothing, I came. You didn't see. Oh, I'm sorry. Shoot. Our next kind of predator in line is Joseph. When I saw something like this on TV a few weeks ago, just things that the person said just made it sound like a setup. A uh, word of advice, if the guy you're talking to has his arms crossed and is chewing gum like it's concrete, he probably doesn't give a shit about what you're saying. Okay, and I- So why would you come out? Just pique my curiosity. It's God's honest truth. So this uh, curiosity thing, right? Super crazy. Definition, a strong desire to know or learn something. Meaning you really wanted to know if this girl was underage. Why would you want to know that? More importantly, why do you think that absolves you of everything? I was just curious. You might as well just tell the officer. I just stuck by. Our next predator in line is Pavlov1234. Robert is 68 years old and he, he claims he's 28. He really pulls it off too. Hey, how you doing? My name's Robert, I'm 28 years old. Ah, ah. Robert is like T-Cap's villain. Not because he's the worst out of all the guys, but just look at him. Plotting world domination and shit. How do you look like a combination of Mr. Burns and Mo and Willie and Apu? Oh, you just look like a cartoon. Hello, Mrs. Cartman, how are you today? What it sounds like, Robert, is that you wanted to come here to have a sexual liaison with a 13-year-old boy. No, it was not. Holy shit, look at those eyes, baby. This is Casey Neistat in 40 years. I went to go check out Robert's chat and this is his first message to the decoy. You down for getting head? I am me if you is. Come on, the poor guy's 68. He needs to cut to the chase. I got type two in stage four. Fuck, I look like being around the bush. Robert's slang in the chat is funny, but probably only to me. You look like a rock dude. <laughs> Thanks, fool. I don't have many friends. Yeah, you do. You got me, fool. You so cute, fool. Is that you, no googly at me? Please tell me, is that you? I'm not gonna lie, bro. I was talking to this 13-year-old, fool. I'll meet up with him right now, fool. Oh shit, it's Chris Hansen. What up, fool? Uh, who are you? What is happening? I wanna be a doctor. What you do? Yeah, you look like a doctor. <laughs> no, then I can cure AIDS. Yeah, good luck with that. By the way, if you paid attention, in the first message, he put money signs at the end. And later in the conversation, he explains that 
he will give you money so he can blow you. What a guy. You so cute, fool. What was your plan here today, Robert? No plan. No plan at all. Our next predator in line is Jean-Pierre. He has a conviction for an assault with a deadly weapon that went back to, I believe, 1981. He was convicted and sentenced to three years in prison for rape. And in 2000, he was also sent to prison for failure to register as a sex offender. Hold on. Are you telling me that Joseph Gordon Levitt's stepbrother is a sergeant? Where's Bane? Why are you in such a hurry to get over on the other side of the fence? Oh, nothing. I thought I was looking for somebody. And... Jeez, the Quaker Oats guy really fell off, huh? By the way, why wouldn't I want to see you and taste your beautiful body? Make love that's to you. Not, you are a gorgeous 13 year old guy. That's not my style. That's no, not my style, no, fool. Now, Jean Pierre told the decoy that he could get him a modeling career, right? And to fluff his resume, he told the decoy that he worked on promotions for kindergarten cop. Are you a photographer? I think about a long time ago I was. Did you ever do any promotions for kindergarten cop, the movie? I saw the movie. That's a good answer. Jean-Pierre's chat is one of a kind, mainly because it was never released. That is until the TCAP community's own Joey did some of his weird, oddly, often successful ways of attaining these types of things, and he delivered. The chat log is essentially Jean-Pierre promising this kid a modeling career, and he misspells modeling right off the bat in the subject line. He promises the decoy all this shit, modeling, acting, a career in porn, and it's funny because the decoy's like, yeah, my fucktard dad is leaving on Friday to Vegas with his whore of a girlfriend, so you can come over then. That's actually the excuse PJ went with. <laughs> Convenient? I think not. Now I don't want to step on Joey's balls too much, so if you actually want to read the chat log for yourself, or actually have it read to you audible style by the TCAP community, the link's down below. I actually voiced a few lines in it. I want to have sex. And even his Cranston made like a fucking remix of the chat log reading, which went like, I, I want to have, have sex. I want to have sex. Have sex. Get me busted. It was just a whole thing. You had to be there. And this guy knows his rights. I know I may have to speak to you, but I don't have to speak to the media. And I don't have to speak to you without a lawyer. Why you gotta be such a dick, Chris? Huh? And this guy knows his rights. He's such a dick, dude. You know they were playing back the footage in the room, and John started saying all that shit, and Chris legit was just there like, This guy knows his rights. <laughs> Everybody gave him fake giggles because they're scared of him. And you gassed his ass up, which is the last thing you want to do to someone as fucking egotistical as Chris. Oh, you guys thought that was funny. <laughs> well, uh, I can record a voiceover saying that for the show. And our final predator is Greg. Now this guy talks like Steve Buscemi. Can I see some ID, please? Don't let the woman who's blackmailing me know that. Do you like older guys? No. No, I'm oh, reading from oh, the chat log. And that is actually going to be the end of this episode. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Let's try and hit 10k likes on this bad boy. I'm shooting high. Please subscribe and turn those notifications on because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to my patrons for supporting me and also shout out to the people rocking the merch of this series. And also another thank you to our sponsor, Vikings Wharf Clans. Don't forget about that link down below. So shout out to everybody, right? the way you steadily support me. I appreciate it all. As always, I am Mr. Gigi, and I am out.